Hello everyone, in this chapter we're going to look at how do we use data from financial statements to help us make important decisions. Uh, this topic is oftentimes referred to as financial statement analysis. Here are the main topics that we'll go over in this chapter. First, we're going to look at how to compute standardized financial statements. Then we're going to look at ratio analysis. And that so each step is actually digging deeper and gaining us more insight about the firm. Uh, followed by the point analysis. Then we'll look at the, the growth rate. Uh, then we have two growth rate that we'll look at. One is internal growth rate and one is sustainable growth rate. And finally, we're going to show you how to use the financial statement information that we have created to help us infer and analyze the performance of a specific company. We'll use the same set of financial statements that we have um, used in the last chapter. So make sure that you have the balance sheet and the income statement handy as we go through the, uh, the calculations for this module as well. Before we continue and to get then to bring in more uh, realistic example, I want to add uh, point out something very important about net income, um, dividend, and equity. Total equity actually includes both preferred stock and common stock equity. So this is an important distinction. We'll talk a little bit more about preferred stock later on. But uh, for most of the time when we think of stocks that we buy and sell in the stock market, we're really talking about common stock. And not every company uses preferred stock. So for companies that do not have preferred stock, there's no confusion. However, if a company has preferred stock, then you may want to specifically indicate that the value and the, and the ratios you're computed is common stock and not total equity. So you will say common equity. So an example is ROE. ROE stands for return on equity. So ROE if you just say equity, are we referring to common equity or total equity? Most of the time, ROE is refer refers to common equity. So the net income that matches um, common equity is net income available to common stockholders. So if we just use net income without a qualifier, again, for companies that don't pay preferred stock, there's no confusion. But for a company that does have preferred stock, total income, total net income, you will first pay preferred dividend out of those net income, and then you have net income available to common stockholders. So remember, preferred stockholder get paid first. So to compute return on equity you, for common stockholders, you use net income available to common stockholders divided by common stock equity. The same is true. We'll introduce this uh, this ratio in a minute. Uh, it's called common stock equity multiplier. So you take the total asset divided by common stock equity. So again, the important thing here is that we, we, we match apples to apples and oranges to oranges. If we are talking about common stock, we need common stock both in in both um, the left hand side and the right hand side and in the numerator and in the denominator. So that's all that is. Uh, even if you end up choosing a company that has preferred stock, um, you do the analysis the same way. Just make sure that you're picking the item that is common stock specific. So the first uh, item that we want to introduce is the concept of standardized financial statements. Another term for standardized is common size. Common size financial statement or standardized financial statement essentially converts all the items in the financial statement into a percentage. And for the balance sheet, we use the total asset as the denominator. So basically, we divide each item by total asset. So we're going to use year one. So let's take a look at inventory. So again, um, make sure that you have your, uh, your sample balance sheet and sample income statement handy. 
Throughout the example, we're going to use ending numbers for most of our calculations. So to convert this into a common size, we'll take each item. So the example we're going to use is inventory. So we'll take the inventory, divide that by total assets. So we'll divide that by $3,096,550. And that turns out to be 0.1566 or 15.66%. So in a common size statement, instead of writing $485,000, you will write 15.66%. So, and to, com to convert the common size, uh, to compute a common size balance sheet, you do that for every single item. You divide every single item by total asset. For the income statement, it's the same concept, except instead of dividing by total asset, you're going to divide by sales. So, let's take a look at our income statement. In our income statement, the cost of goods sold is $580,000 and sales is $850,000. So to compute the common size income statement, we'll divide every single item by sales, by $850,000. And we end up with 0.6824 or 68.24%. That tells us that the cost of goods sold is 68% of sales. And another way of looking at this is that the gross margin uh, is 32%. So every dollar that the company generate in sales, the cost is 68 cents, meaning it bring in 32 cents in gross margin that you can use to pay other fixed expenses. Um, and to convert the income statement into a common size, you simply divide every single item by sales and replace the $580,000 with 68.24%. So why do we do this calculation? There are two main reasons. One is, and the most important reason, is to make comparison easier. So if a company is growing in size, then if you're comparing fixed numbers, you may see that the company's revenue is going up and also its costs are going up, and that makes sense. But is the company doing better or worse over time? That's a lot harder to judge. But if you convert everything into percentages, then it's a lot easier to compare because if its cost as a percentage of sales is going up over time, that may be a cause for concern and you may need to spend some time analyzing the performance, uh, what is, what is um, the driver behind the increase in cost. Uh, also important is when you compare the company against a competitor or compare the company against an industry average. Again, you cannot compare apples and and oranges by converting everything into a percentage, then it makes the comparison a lot more meaningful. So is this is the, uh, we will conclude here about standardized financial statement. Uh, what we're gonna do next in our next video is to dive deeper into computing different kinds of financial ratios.